Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on the video. I'm going to show you the build that I used uh, to make my first playthrough of Elden Ring. It's a great sword, dual wield, power stance, strength build that got me over all of the bosses and encounters in the game. You can start making this build right from the beginning of the game and keep improving it while you progress. So it can be used from early game to end game. So let's check it out. The main core of this build and its strategy is using power stancing, that's equipping the same type of weapon on both hands. Uh, this build used uh, a lot of jump attacks as the start of the three hit combo on, en on enemies that will result in massive damage and also more staggering that will lead to possible critical hits. The only downside is that you won't be able to use any shields and that's why you gotta be a little more aggressive and know when to dodge and when to attack. Using the jump attack as the opener can shorten the distance between you and the enemy real quick and in most cases you can break their stance and it will let you keep adding hits using the L1 or left bumper and the final hit again with the L1. For this build you will need to have a little bit of endurance to be able to perform all the attacks and have the possibility of rolling out of the way. So try not to get outnumbered and instead pick fights one by one, it's easier that way. But if it gets warm, you have the capability of hitting a couple of enemies at the same time, thanks to the power stand swing that has a good arc. For single fights, all you want to do is easy, is just start the three hit combo with the jump attack. That is the most damaging hit uh, because we're using uh, the claw talisman. Also another good tip for this build is to use the, the targeting system or the locking system to be more effective while use, using the jump attacks because if you miss one, you'll be left wide open for a hit. So be ready to roll or backstep. But for some bosses, especially the bigger ones like dragons, it's sometimes better not to use the targeting. For most challenging enemies or bosses, you want to enchant your weapon with Golden Bow and then with Flame Grand Me Strength. And they will not cancel each other out. And then buff your weapon with the Seppuku Ash of War to build up bleed on enemies. And try to do jump attack as much as possible so you can get the most damage with this build. Using the Seppuku Ash of War with Blood Affinities uh, on both great swords will let you proc the Lord of Blood Exaltation Talisman to make even more damage in the first hit. And then when you proc bleed on the enemy, your damage will increase even more. So the more buff you do, more damage you will make at the end. Now let's talk about the attributes that the build has. As you can see, I'm going with 40 Vigor, uh, the first soft cap that he has, but if need to be, you can go as high as you need to if you need more HP in your build. I got 20 Mind, uh, 40 Endurance, uh, 77 Strength, aiming for 80, which is the third soft cap, uh, 13 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, and 25 Fate so far, and 9, Ar 9 Arcane. But while leveling this build, you want to focus on Vigor, Endurance, and Strength. Then, and when you get to a comfortable level, you can apply some points into Faith that will let you apply your incantations. The reason behind you will invest in those three attributes is because you are dual wielding. So, you don't have a shield, so you need a higher HP pool uh, to take more damage. And that's your Vigor. Uh, more equip load to be able to use high armor and still be able to do fast rolls with your heavy armor and two great swords, and that's your endurance. And be able to do the most amount of damage with your two great swords, that's your strength. So in this build, I'm using two great swords: the gargoyle's great sword and the knight's great sword, both obtainable fairly early to mid game, and both scaling pretty good with strength. Uh, this build works with any good great sword that scales with strength. I started this build with the Lore Sworn and Claymore that you get super early and kept using them pretty much until mid game. So that's, if you're starting the game, that's the go to great sword for you. I'm using Seppuku Ash of War on both swords to increase attack power and increase blood loss on enemies. And also using the Blood Affinity to increase even more the blood loss buildup on both swords. For the armor, I recommend getting the Raptor's Black Feather chest piece. That will increase the damage of your jump attacks. The helm can be a piece that you, I mean, can increase your strength like the Omen Smirk mask or the Imp Head Wolf to increase your endurance or the Imp Head Corpse to increase your fate. It's really up to you if you wanna, wanna do with this piece. At early game, I remember using uh, 
any high armor piece that I could get. Um, essentially, it's just you know the fashion style, whatever makes your character look good. Same goes for your gloves and boots. You want to have a mid to high armor depending on your equip load. With the talisman is where we can start having fun and taking advantage of this build playstyle. So our first talisman is the claw talisman that will increase jumping attack damage and pair up with the raptor's black feather chest piece is a killer combination. We also got a uh, Radagon Sword Seal to increase our attributes, uh, vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity by five. So it's pretty juicy to get to the soft cap or any weapon requirement. Uh, the downside is that you will increase your damage taken. But remember, it's it's like a like a having a, a glass cannon kind of build. Uh, but remember that you will rock heavy armor and a lot of HP with this build. So. Kind of like it balances out. Another talisman is the Rotten Windex Sword Insignia that will increase the attack power when doing successive attack. And remember that will help with the three hit comb that I was, you know, with the power stand that I was talking about. Starting with the jump attack and and doing the other uh, left L1 left bumper uh, hits. And finally, Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman that will increase the attack power when blood loss is in the vicinity and remember we got both swords with blood affinities and for challenging fights we can pop seppuku uh, to have this attack power increase before starting the fight you will know when you have it uh, when your character is, is glowing red while leveling up don't worry if you don't have all the talismans uh, there are awesome backups like the great jar arsenal if your equip load is low the Earth Tree's favor to increase your HP, stamina, and equip load. And you can get this one er, super early game. And the Green Turtle Talisman that raises your stamina recovery speed. And the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman that will boost physical damage negation. Those last two, the Green Turtle Talisman and the, dra the Dragon Crest Shield, are super good. It will work wonders on, on challenging fights and bosses. The three main incantations that I use with this build, it's uh, Flame Grandly Strength, that will raise your physical attack power, Bestial Vitality, that will heal HP over time, and Golden Vow, that will increase attack and defense power uh, for you and your allies. Um, on late game to late game, using these incantations were super important uh, because it increased the attack power of the swords. Uh, for instance, uh, with Talisman I mentioned, I have 615 damage on my right sword and 501 on the left sword. So when you buff prior the fight, you want to put out your shield and then buff with the golden bow first, then buff with flame grand strength. And then you want to put up your swords again and buff with the seppuku on both of them. And now you'll see a huge jump on your attack power. Uh, you go, we go to the menu, the status, and we'll see the right armament will have uh, 1069 and the left one will have 879. It will work and it will help for challenging fights and, and boss fights uh, and help you with, uh, you know, popping blood loss on your enemies. So again, guys, this build will let you progress uh, through the entire game like I did with it. So uh, you can get uh, a little help if you want with the Spirit Ashes, like the Mimic Tear. And even without the nerf, is pretty good. And the Great Shield Soldier uh, Spirit Ash. That's uh, one of the, the ones that I prefer. Or even the Spirit Jellyfish that you can get pretty early game. It's up to you really when you want to summon. But the playstyle is the same for this build. It will be a three hit combo, starting with the jumping attack as your opener, and then power stancing with L1 or left bumper, and then L1 again. Rolling and dodging if you need to, and doing critical hits if you break their armor. Remember, the jump attack is a highly stance breaker, so try to take advantage of it. Peek your fights, don't get swarmed, because remember that you don't have a shield, you will take a lot of damage. And for challenging fights, you can buff up prior to the fight for a major jump in your attack power. My recommendation is that always try to buff up when you see a big enemy or you know that's going to be a tough fight. 
So yeah, I hope you guys like the build. Uh, if you find it helpful, please slash that like button to help me out and have YouTube share this video with more people. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or tips, anything uh, about this build and to share, do so on the comments below. As always, be safe and see you on the next one. Ciao.